is where you need four hands. Welcome back to my build diary for my Coke bottle steam engine. I stress this is a build diary, not a tutorial. I am not an expert, I am an amateur. Uh, here we are putting the inner cylinder head, steam engines have two cylinder heads, into the 3 d chuck, uh, trying to get it as parallel as possible. Because it's so thin, I only have it on one tooth of the 3 d chuck, which is not highly secure, so taking very light cuts and doing some initial facing passes to get things uh, so I can measure where I'm at. And then we take down the inner boss down to the size of the inner bore, which I think is three quarter inch if I recall, um, to get our first point and we get that until it fits inside the inner bore. Now the cylinder head actually sits inside the shoulder, so the next uh, we have to take down the uh, outer diameter to the diameter of the inside of the shoulder with a little bit of clearance. And that is very, there's very little room here. So I'm making sure that I'm uh, paper width away is where I'm setting my zero on my DRO so that I won't uh, chip the chuck. And I'm gonna feed in manually and be very careful to not exceed that. And this should turn down the necessary thickness that we need for the final part on this outer diameter. So this should complete the machining for this part on this side. Other than uh, we need to put in the hole for the uh, packing gland. Now this is, uh, there's a through hole of 1 8 inch, which as we'll see later, I probably shouldn't have done at this stage. And then there is a larger hole which does not go all the way through, which acts as the space for the packing material. So here I'm setting the, the height of the drill above the surface. Uh, for some reason I'm using a drill that's the same depth as the hole here. That was a brain fart. I usually use a 1 8 inch uh, broken end mill. Uh, but that sets me to zero. And then I go into the specific depth that's needed for this uh, feature. And then I ream the eighth inch hole, which as we see later will, is a complete waste of time. This is an aluminum scrap that conveniently has a boss already on the back of it, uh, mounted up in the three jaw and I'm facing it. And what I'm gonna try here is some pressure turning, which I've never done before. And uh, this seems kind of sketchy to me but uh, I couldn't figure out any other way to turn the outside diameter of uh, the upper cylinder head. So this is actually my third attempt setting this up. I discovered for some reason that uh, some of my center drills are not 60 degrees. So once I got that sorted out, the actual center fits in the end there. And this is part of an old mandrel that's chamfered at the end and it, it fits fairly neatly into the uh, there's an indentation in the top of the cylinder head. So this gives me something smooth to reference off. Uh, and the idea being here, it's, it's tightened up enough that it's tappable at this point. And then when I get it centered, I uh, tighten it up fully uh, to the maximum that the tailstock will do. And then take very light cuts because I don't trust this not to move. But with light cuts, I should be okay. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. If you have feedback, constructive or otherwise, please put it in the comments below. And finally here I'm taking a very light skim pass over the uh, screw bosses and this will give me both a diameter and a surface uh, for reference for mounting in the mill for drilling the holes. The final lathe work on the inner cylinder head presents some ch uh, mounting challenges because 
the really the only way to can't hold this in the three jaw chuck got to put this in the collet but my er collets require there to be support at the front and the back and ideally all the way through the collet it's not like a 5c collet where you can just bung things in the front so here i'm turning a piece of aluminum to the exact same diameter as the boss on my part to support the rear of the collet and then uh, I can mount the, the part in the front and get a good grip on it and, uh, and get all that tightened up. And the other thing I've noticed with the ER collets is when you tighten them up, things move uh, front to back because the collet itself is moving. So I'm putting some constant pressure on this from the tailstock as I tighten it up to make sure that it's fully up against the face of the collet. If I had a 5C collet chuck, this would be much easier. And now we uh, turn down this side, and here we want to bring the outside diameter to the same as we did from the other side. Uh, and in fact, most of that, that should all be scrap material. And then we bring it down to thickness, and then there's a very uh, 32nd inch high boss that goes into the cylinder bore that gets put on this side. Now as I'm machining this, you may notice the hole in the center is starting to look as if it's moving around. And how much of this is it being off center in the first place because I drilled it from the other side and the drill moved? And how much of it is just uh, a burr coming up from the turning? I don't know, but it ends up with the hole appearing to be off center. And then when I clean it up, it ends up slightly oversized. So I'm taking the, the thickness against the rear of the part, which is the face of the collet itself. And that allows me to set my DRO for thickness and then I can complete the machining operations. This is where I start to notice the center hole is wobbling. And at this point, I don't know if it was always wobbling or if it just started wobbling. Looking at the video now, I can see it was probably the turning operations has pushed over a burr into the hole in an uneven manner. But uh, I was thinking, oh, my center hole is off. And of course, that's fairly important. Um, the piston rod needs to at least clear that metal. Um, ideally it should be a close fit around the piston rod. I found a center drill with a 1 8 end on it which I figure is kind of rigid and will at least make sure that there's no metal in the way of the piston rod. It's no longer a reamed hole and it still looks a bit oval but that's what I went with and at this point the part may be scrap. To get this centered in the mill I have it mounted fairly high up and I don't have a proper v-block but this is kind of what I've been using to try and uh, keep circular things and, and then I screwed up yeah. Stupidity there? Yeah, I screwed up the initial run of the G-code and managed to run the collet into the part. So I'm taking a very light cut initially uh, just to see where we are. These are G3s and then stepping in in a loop. So it's a very short piece of code but it will essentially face the part in a circular manner. I'm speeding this up a lot because I'm running it very slow. And it looks like I lost my center. Bugger. Remove the tool, install dial indicator, recenter, remove the dial indicator, reinsert the tool, and re zero the tool. And then we're ready to go again. I'm testing the waters on depth here just to try and figure out what the tool will comfortably do. It's only an 8 inch tool, it's about 6 inches out from the quill. The quill is about 
18 inches to two feet out from the uh, pillar it sits on. The whole thing is really not very rigid, but this is the tool I have to work with. We're running at about 3000 RPM, which is faster than advertised because I think it's 60 hertz instead of 50 hertz. Um, so this goes really slow. So this is sped up partly because of the lack of rigidity and uh, a lot because of the Acme screws and the feedback loop in the CNC. I do need to take uh, these uh, accurate cuts very slowly so that the CNC can keep up with position. Luckily with this small tool, you actually don't want to go more than about a thou or two per rotation anyway. So it goes fairly slow. On a real CNC machine, you'd be running this bit at like 18,000 RPM and you'd be chewing through the material a lot quicker. But uh, here we are just going to speed this up a lot. Yeah, there's another error. I uh, was going for the the next pass and I forgot to reset one of the settings in my G-code, so I took a chunk out of the side. It's rather annoying. I should always take a dummy run an inch above the part just to make sure it does a sensible thing, but sometimes I forget. Yay! That will do. So I tried uh, setting the part up on the other side in the same manner as before, but that didn't go too well. I'll show more of that later. Uh, but here I'm using a different centering method of taking the half between the two jaws and the halves across the side of the uh, circular side of the part and just clamping it directly between the vise. As I say, I don't have V-block uh, v for this, so ideally I'd want a V-block to hold uh, anything circular by three points, but I need to get a V-block of appropriate size for the vise. Uh, the camera shake here is interesting. I'm mounting the GoPro directly to the vise here, and this is fairly rigid. It works at most RPMs, but when I'm running at this high speed, it is getting a resonance in the camera mount. And the anti-shake then compensates for that and moves everything off to the side. So every time I stop, it moves to one side, which is weird. Um, so I'm probably as a future project, I'm going to make a GoPro mount out of steel and or aluminum but not plastic and uh, that I can mount directly to the end this is giving pretty good footage. I also figured out why I can't do 4k video in my editing software. The trick is to not use the HEVC compression in the GoPro and to use preview files. So this is where the mounting stuff starts to go wrong. Um, this is going to infuriate a recent commenter because uh, this is really bad. Um, I have it mounted on a piece of aluminum by a single screw through the middle and it turns out that that single screw isn't up to the and loosening off and this takes a number of attempts. So I Im immediately notice on this first hole before it even goes through that it has loosened off. So I take it out, put in a lock nut, tighten it all up again, remount it, recenter and go for it again. And the vibration here is not, it's the camera that's moving mostly, uh, not the machine itself. The camera is, is shaking about more than the machine is because it has a resonance. So it is kind of hard to see here, but I put in these four holes and I'm looking at it thinking that's moving again and it's just not there at all. At this point, I think I've killed the part completely, which is really annoying. However, it turns out the holes were not that bad, uh, and they are clearance holes anyway, so one of them is now slightly oval. And uh, we go in for the drill and tap of the two holes. These are at 45 degrees to the others so that we have clearance for the crosshead so we can get our screwdriver in to tighten the screws that go in for the packing gland. And then after this, these holes get tapped 172. So this is a number 50 something drill. It's really small stuff. Uh, it is very nice to have the DRO and the CNC just to position the holes like this, but I'm manually feeding these with the CNC, with the MPG 
um, because I have no idea what the correct feeds and speeds are for this uh, that will actually work on my machine. And then after this I tap them and I tap them carefully in front of the camera so that the camera can see what's going on. I keep my fingers out of the way but I forget to turn the camera on. So what have we learned from all these escapades? Here's our parts. How many mistakes did I make? Pretty much nothing on the outside there. I uh, did a rapid down in, in the wrong place there because I didn't set my zero before I ran the program again and that cut that notch. And then off camera while clamping it trying to get the new uh, center around here I had it up in the vise like I did the first time around and I managed to crush the little delicate edge on the cast iron there, which is now breaking off in my fingers. Oh, joy. Um, so that, however, is... It's not a functional part. The engine will still run. It just It's very much a visible cosmetic error. It's really annoying. Uh, the holes are in the right place, as far as I can tell. It all seems to fit. So that's... All that's wrong with that is it looks nasty and I may want to remake it out of uh, brass or bronze anyway uh, to make it match so and if I get really worried I'll buy a new one uh, the lower cylinder had multiple errors there uh, the initial facing went okay the center hole I think is a bit large it's supposed to be one eighth of an inch this is a one eighth of an inch end mill. Uh, it's, it's slightly rattly, but not not too bad. So that's a bit loose. Uh, it could be better. I think the drill wandered uh, when I drilled it from this side. By the time it got to that side, and it was slightly off center when it got to the other side, I should have left that center hole to drill last, um, and I did it from the first side. Uh, then I had all the fun of clamping. That wasn't that I was using. Uh, it was this. Uh, I was clamping this to this piece of random aluminum that I had that I had a hole in using some PCB mount screws, 3 millimeter screws. And it was not staying tight. Um, perhaps some super glue would have helped there. In the end, uh, I got through it. These holes ended up, three of them were in the right place, one of them was slightly over. I was They're clearance holes anyway, so one of them, it's hard to tell which one, is now slightly oval. Um, these holes went okay, the, the little screws, so they, they were critical uh, for location. Uh, so the piston rod is not actually supported on this hole. This is the gland that's just a, a seal, and the seal will form to the shaft. The shaft is running between the cross head, which is already loose, and the piston, which I haven't made yet, so I haven't had a chance to screw that up. But various blemishes on here, none of which are visible. The only thing you'll see on this is around the edge. So this part, I think, will be fine. So we'll give it an assemble and, and see how it goes. Moment of truth. So these are at an angle here so you can get clearance around the cross head to get your screwdriver in. So that goes in that way. It does go in. There we go. And we get our holes lined up. And they did line up before. I know they lined up before. I lined them up against the I lined them up against the Let's go 180 degrees, see if it looks better. How's that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I line them up against the cylinder the first time. So the cylinder goes on that way. Like that. And then we add our screws. Dope. With a small pliers or tweezers would be a good thing. Here we go. One, two. These are size two screws. Three eighths of an inch long.
Let's try and tame those up, see what happens. Yeah, that doesn't want to go in. Oh well, we'll just leave that as it is just now with just the just the three. I'll have to work on tweaking that clearance hole. goes on like that and then this the question is which which side do I want to put the ugly on let's break off that last crappy bit doesn't want to break off okay um, then we're going to be looking at the valve gear so we'll put it around the other side Okay, that fits. That goes on. Looking okay. Just got to work on the clearance for that one screw. But we have a more parts on the engine. So I'll try not to screw up so much next time. Thanks for watching.